Good one. Good man. I've been looking for bait everywhere. Went to uh, the golf pier in Fort DeSoto and the bait were all small. Surprisingly, usually there's some pretty decent sized bait fish over there. Um, mixed in with like the really big size bait, which is the, uh, the thread fins, but they were all fry baits over there. So we're gonna go ahead and cast that for a uh, pinfish on the, on the grass flat right here. Whole bunch of smaller pinfish. Um, and then we're gonna be fishing with them, hoping to catch snapper, mackerel. Let's go ahead and cast that for these bait and then uh, start fishing, let's go. That looks like a one and done right there. Plenty, plenty bait. Good stuff. We got a variety of sizes. That's a big one. Good for snook. But we got also got a bunch of smaller ones there. What's up everybody? We just got on the uh, St. Pete Pier. At the end of the pier, the only spot where you can fish, but we're just throwing this um, Doc's Goofy Jig right now. See if we can get a uh, pompano, see if the pompano are, are running. I remember the old St. Pete Pier, the, uh, the upside down pyramid. This was like 10 years ago. We used to come out here, just jig along the pilings and catch stud pompano. I'm talking 17, 18 inches to the fork. Big ones, it's been a long time since I've uh, Fish for pompano here. Not the targeted species over here, but I just wanted to make a couple casts with the pompano jig. Just never know. We were throwing the uh, the pompano jig around for a little bit. No bites. Um, caught that little snag, a little pinfish, but that's about it. We're uh, switching it up now, fishing with live pinfish we caught earlier. See if we can get some uh, mangrove snapper or, you know, Decent fish in general. Be cool to pull on like a, a 20, 20 inch grouper or a, I wouldn't mind a 14 inch mangrove snapper either. A little, little grouper. First bait I dropped down, got a little grouper. That's pretty cool. Little guy, man. Little guy. Look at that. Let's put him back. See you at the, uh, the Skyway Pier. Oh, there you go. Oh, you got it, you got it right there. Oh my gosh, big one. Big mackerel. That's a good mackerel, man. Wow. Let's bring him in quick. Check out that mackerel, man. That's a stud right there. Off the pier, dude. Heck yeah. Let's put him in the box. Got him right on the corner of the mouth too. We're gonna bleed this guy, let him bleed out, and then we're gonna throw him in the box. Um, we're gonna try to get a few more. And then like I said, we're gonna bring him to Ted Peters. Have him smoke it for us. Um, last time I brought fish to Ted Peters and had him smoke them for me, uh, it was like five bucks a pound, which is not bad. Hopefully we get plenty of these uh, Spanish mackerel, and then we'll bring them to Ted Peters. All right. In the cooler. It's outgoing tide right now. So that macro is uh, gonna be on this side of the pier because that water is coming coming towards me. Hopefully we get another good one right here. That was a solid um, Spanish macro, man. There are so many macro right here, guys. I've been looking for them everywhere. I mean, I've been to Fort DeSoto, Skyway Pier. They just are, they're, they're just not there. But for some reason, they're loaded over here. I mean, pretty decent sized ones too. They're fun to fight too, man. These these guys, I feel like they're underrated. I like catching them because they, they pull, <laughs> especially when you get like a, a 20 incher. Just had a nice bite right there, man. Sometimes when you let these jigs um, sink a little bit and then start working it back, it's better that way, you get more bites. Because sometimes I feel like they're, they're, you know, a little bit deeper, but usually they'll come up to like a foot or even on the surface little of the water to hit your bait. Especially, especially if you're using live bait, they'll come all the way up man, and, and just pop. 
on the uh, on the bait. And don't be afraid to, to jig along the pilings because they do not like structure. I mean, once you hook them up, they'll run straight out to the open. They won't run into the, uh, the structure. That's what I've noticed from my experience. Oh my God, that one came up out of the water. So what I'm doing is, since the tide is going out, I'm just casting that jig up current a little bit, letting it sink maybe like, I don't know, three, four feet, and then just work that jig back. There's another one. Oh, that's another, another good one right there, man. Boy, they are fast. About the same size. Okay. A couple next time too. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Another stud there. Check that out, man. And he clipped me. <laughs> there we go. Destroy that jig, but whatever. We're gonna bleed this guy and throw him in the box. Got my bait out there, just letting it sink and then slowly work that back. I mean, you don't have to like keep working it like that. You can just twitch, pause, let it sink, twitch, twitch. You know, the, the usual twitches for like your Meridine, your suspending twitch bait. Same deal with this jig. Dropping a, a bait down there for a mangrove snapper. Let's see if they're uh, see if they're around. As soon as I dropped the other rod with a jig, the Spanish mackerel just started busting the surface. Classic. Always happens that way. Good snapper right there, boys. Heck yeah, that's a keeper. Throw in the box. Snapper and mackerel, baby. Snapper and mackerel kind of day. That's a fat. Mangrove snapper. Just comes right off. Nice. Oh, this guy's this guy's probably right on ten. It's a fat one for for you know right off this pier here. See you, dude. All right, let's send another bait down there. Snapper bite's been hot, man. Got two bites already. Lost one. Caught that one, you know, decent one. Let's see if we can. Get on some more. They should be schooled up. Good fish. What is it? Snapper. Oh yeah, baby, that's a good one. What the heck? <laughs> he's hooked weird. <laughs> Look how he's hooked. <laughs> How's that even possible? That's a good snapper though. We're gonna keep him. We switched to uh, fishing with pinfish because Jig fishing was pretty slow because it's slack tide. But um, as soon as I drop a pinfish down there, a bunch of these guys just, you know, started charging at that pinfish. So we're fishing fishing with a uh, pinfish now. But that's weird how, how I landed this guy here. It's weird how he's hooked. He definitely went for that that bait for sure, but there it is. That was that was easy to unhook. <laughs> Not a bad one there. That's a 11 inch mangrove snapper right there. Maybe 11 and a half. Let's throw him in the cooler. Free lining right now and the, uh, the mackerel are like fired up man, on these bait and snapper. Mangrove snapper and mackerel. Here, we're on, we're on, we're on it. We are on it. What is that? Oh my god. Oh my god, dude, look at that snapper. That is probably my PB, PB mangrove snapper land base right there soaked that uh, cut bait on the bottom and inhaled it. That's impressive. All right, man. That right there is a snapper, boys. Soaked that cut bait on the bottom and this guy could not resist it. That is a stud mango. Look at that thing. <laughs> That's so cool, just right off this pier here. Let's measure this guy before we put him in the cooler. But just to see how big he is, I'm guessing like 18, 17, 18 inches. 16 and a half to be exact. Close to 17 inches. Pretty solid, man, for just right off the pier. Good deal. Let's throw him in the box, man. Solid right there. That was freaking insane, guys. Like I said, man, my biggest snapper land base to date. That snapper pool drag, 16 and a half, almost 17 inch mangrove snapper. Unbelievable. 
We're gonna try our luck with a uh, Spanish mackerel fishing now. See if we can uh, whack a couple more. Oh, pulled me off. That guy hit it on the drop, man. Must have cast it right in front of his uh, his face there. Shredded. Oh, there it is. There's another one. Oh no, this is there. This is a leather jack, I believe. That is a leather jack. So if you guys ever, you know, hook one of these, be careful because those spines on the back and on his uh, his belly, very venomous. Got stuck by one, and man, it was not fun. My hand was swollen. All right, guy. See ya. There it is. It's a good one there. Let's go, baby. About the same size, actually. Look at that. Uh, a little bit smaller. Still a keeper, though. Looks like he got cut right there on his side. See that? Pretty good right there. Let's put it in, let's put it in the box. Good one. Good macro. Good macro. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, baby. Let's go. Look at that. Stud. We're gonna put this guy in the box. We're gonna give it a shot again at uh, tasting it, trying it out again. It's a solid macro right here, man. For right off the pier. Can't beat it. He's gonna get bloody. We're gonna bleed him out though. All right, we've been jigging for, I wanna say like 15 minutes. No Spanish mackerel. Tide is super, super slack. So we're gonna cut up the fish, fillet the fish up and um, take him to Ted Peters and have him smoke him up for us. Let's go. We just got to the uh, filleting station. I know could have filleted the fish up um, on the on the St. Pete Pier. They have a filleting table right there, but I didn't have my filleting knife with me. It was uh, in the truck. So, plus this spot here is already on the way to um, Ted Peters. So we're gonna cut up these fish real quick and take them over there. I'm gonna show you guys how to, how to um, butterfly these mackerel. All right, so. So when you're butterflying them, what you want to do is, usually I just cut them like that. On that knife along the bones, just as if you were just filleting up a uh, fish normally, but you don't want to cut all the way through. Bust through the, uh, the rib cage like that, right? Just like so. You can probably just cut that. The other side too. Same thing with this side. On that knife along the bones. I mean, you could just fillet it if you want to, but I like butterflying it. It's because you can uh, get more meat out of it, especially the meat around the, the stomach. You can scrape all that meat off and the meat around the stomach is really fatty. It's flavorful. Look at me talking like I, I eat a whole lot of Spanish mackerel. <laughs> Typically I, I release them, but Today we're gonna we're gonna bring them to Ted Peters and have them smoke it for us. That's how you butterfly a uh, Spanish mackerel, just like that. I bled this uh, this guy out so he's not as bloody. Clean him up real good and throw him in the bag. All right, let's do that to the rest of them and bring them to Ted Peters. That's our our last fillet right there. Look at this one here. This is probably the biggest uh, mackerel we caught today. That's like a pound. I want to say that's a pound, pound and a quarter of fillets right there. All right, looking good. Let's take him to Ted Peters. Got the goods. Going to the uh, smokehouse. Can I take, I want to have it ready by five today. Okay, sounds okay. good, man. What's your name? Brad. Brad's gonna get this all smoked up for us by five o'clock. Okay. I don't know, I just guessed two pounds, it might be more. 2.68. 2.68, is that good? Okay, now, all the preliminaries, name and phone numbers. Okay. I don't call you unless you don't show. I charge three fifty a pound, like I said. You're looking at ten oh four. You guys staying busy? Yeah, somewhat. It does slow down this time of year, though. Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, ninety six. Gonna be eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. 
I should have been. I'll your receipt. Get back your ticket. Right. Time to go pick up the smoked Spanish mackerel. Let's do this. Man, it is super hot here in Florida. It's uh, late August. Can't wait for that weather to start cooling down and the gag grouper bite turns on and sheep's head, redfish on the flats in the winter time. Can't wait for all of that. All right, we just pulled up to Ted Peters. There we go. Let's go pick up the goods. Hey! That's what it looks like. Oh it's yeah. All done. Looks real good, man. There's not a lot of uh, salt on there either. We don't put a lot of salt on there. That's awesome. See I don't eat a lot of salt either myself, man. Not good for you. <laughs> it's not. There's enough natural salinity in fish, saltwater fish anyways, though. Yeah. There is. Appreciate it. Not a problem, man. Thank you. Enjoy.